what is happening, yo. Oh, all right. We're back doing this. Um, we're going to, you know, I said last time I'd be doing this more and then I had a lot of organizing and things to do and holidays and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, as January is the month of just so much to do, <laughs> Um, I will be likely utilizing this stream a lot to help I uh, make sure that I'm doing the work I need to do, you know, like in season, if you remember, I, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the morning stream, um, was just you guys helping me out <laughs> doing the things I need to do every morning. I'll make sure I did it on time. So, uh, what's up, man? Friends, I good to see you. Uh, I've been so long. Oh, it's the first time you're chatting too. Oh, thank you so much for being here. Happy holidays to you as well. Happy New Year as well to you, uh, SWBF. Um, it's good to see y'all, really. I, uh, but yeah, what we're doing this year, if you guys don't know, uh, for PL7, we are going to have our own projections, uh, and we are hoping, crossing our fingers, you know, there's a possibility it won't come out until later on or something. I don't want to make any promises, but um, you know, we were making some cool things, hopefully to make it easy for you guys to access those projections right uh so what that process is aiden hall and frank bruni have worked for like a year making a projection system which is awesome um they sent me uh i think let me let me count here i think it's about 250 maybe 300 oh god uh 222 pictures i uh, would that have projections on them now uh in so many cases i'm just going to ignore them but my job <laughs> shocking is to prove them and to go through and see you know what i would make um projection wise so this isn't going to be an exact science if you guys remember me doing these in previous years they were called reluctant projections but the purpose of this is to have something that i can just put my seal of approval on. Um, you know, if I'm going to be using our our collective projections for Tat Wars and my drafts and everything, and I want to feel good about it, <laughs> uh, to feel like, yeah, Nathan Evaldi is being projected correctly, and how I envision him and expect him for the season ahead. It's going to be very loose. They have a lot of um, fields i uh, that they have projected out i'm not going to adjust all of it i uh, most of the time little of it i uh, i don't even hmm. I'm, I'm looking at what they provide for example they have a projection for how many hits they're going to allow or so i uh, i'm not even going to touch that i'm going to be only touching i think era whip game started innings pitched earned runs, walks, walk percentage, and strikeout percentage. Uh, and with all of that in mind, quality start projections? No. Uh, not a, not None of those. Uh, I will... We'll see if we can have that one added. They might have that in the back end of it. Uh, but I'm going to I'm gonna eventually show you. Hey, it still works. Daytona. Welcome back, man. Good to see you. Uh, it it does blend in. If you notice something about me, Yancey, I like the color blue. More at eleven. <laughs> I I will I will be putting up the green screen shortly. I actually first before I do that, I want to see if anyone here knows conditional formatting, where if I bold a cell, I can assign a certain color automatically. I know that has to be a thing. But I have no idea. Conditional formatting. Uh, manage rules. Okay, new rule. Format cells that contain. Nope. <laughs> this is actually looks pretty like simple, but I can't. All right, I'm gonna put up the green screen. We'll figure this out together, guys. Okay? Uh, we'll figure this out. But I need y'all. Uh, I'll probably do it over here. I'll do this. Hold on. I got I got a craft bucky. Uh, okay. 
All right. Here we go. Of course, as always, uh, first things I got to do, first things I have to do. Man, it's been so long, guys. Um, oh, man, I was listening to Wolfgang uh, Van Halen. I didn't realize he put out his own album this year called Mammoth. Uh, it's pretty dang good. Um, but no, we're going to go back to good old stream beats, if you guys remember that. Oh, yeah, all my Spotify things are all messed up because, like, you really like stream beats. I'm like, I, I know, but that was <laughs> that wasn't for, like, me on my personal time. Yeah, there's that. Okay. All right, so that's – you guys get that. But in the meantime, actually, let's just do this. I can turn that off now, and then I can do trumpets for you. Wait. No, that didn't work. That didn't work. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's been a while. There we go. Goodbye. I'm in the void. You know, so we have a year coming coming around, 2022. Another year. Another year gone by. I hope you guys have been, I don't know, thinking about yourselves and, and, and doing the right things. That's all I got. That's all I got right now. <laughs> okay, I am going to see if I remember how to do this right. So, if I did... That would mean this would be over here. So I do that. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes. <laughs> I'm very satisfied with myself right now. Okay, so I just got to, yeah. Cool. So this is what we're doing today. This is it. I don't know why it's getting cut off so heavily. Okay. All right. Um, I can zoom in on this if that's what you guys want. That's probably the way to go. Okay. Exciting stuff today. I uh, I am just going to be going through all this. I'm, I'm probably going to do it by team. Uh, I think it's a lot better that way. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've got the green screen back. I need to figure out conditional formatting. So I'm going to be looking to you guys to help me out with that. Okay, so conditional formatting, manage rules. No, no, no. Okay, so if I were to bold something, new rule. Oh, Lord. <laughs> not values. It's not values, though. So it changes it to a bold. I just want to be able to like quickly do like bold and then all of a sudden it has a color assigned to it. Essentially I need to tell I need to tell our guys like hey I touch this one. So when you do this again, uh, when like a signing is made, don't touch the things that I adjusted. I uh, necessarily I'll go back and, and change it, but like if other things happen, we have an improved pass, like don't change these things. That's all. Um, but yeah, I don't have, I have no idea. This worksheet. <sighs> no, I'm just gonna have to do it myself, aren't I? Ugh. Well, all right, fine. Okay. So let's do it. Let's just get into it. Um, <laughs> hey, what's up, KJ Mac? Thanks so much for the sub, man. Okay, so I have over here on the right, on the right screen, our guys. I'm going to do it by team. This is, I'm going to take so long. This is, this is going to, I have 220, as you guys can see. There's also like free agents and stuff that I'll probably ignore by the end of it. But I, there are so many of these 
that I'm gonna be back doing these for a while. I. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's do this. Uh, sort A to Z. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can hide this. It's actually kind of nice that it extended a little. Okay, no, don't want that. This. All right. Let's zoom in a little for you guys. Cool, that looks way better to me. Um, all right, so Bumgarner, I uh, I'm gonna be also. Yeah, we can do this. Hey, that's me inside of me. I uh, I'm gonna be doing my research on the side over right here. So. Actually, yeah, let's just double stack this. Why not? All right, so we're gonna talk about Madison Bumgarner first. I'm just gonna go down from Arizona and all the way down. It's gonna do it. Hey, thanks so much for the, for the sub, KJ Mac. Who is number one? Why is it Yankee staff ace and Sly Young winner Nestor Cortez Jr.? Oh no, Asher. Don't do this. Don't be that. <laughs> Uh, okay, so with Bumgarner, um, there are a couple things I want to note with him. I uh, fastball velocity was actually kind of interesting through the year. Uh, I want to be able to do this with a game log, and I kind of can, I think. Actually, hold on. I uh, like, for example, eventually I want this to show, like, you can go fastball here, and you can actually see. Oh, uh, you know, what? I'm gonna do some things quickly. Uh, I'm gonna take you. Make you large or large again. Yeah, let's do this. Nope. Too small. <laughs> but I want it to be like, yeah, something like this. And then when we go back to this thing, it's still large. Yeah, okay, good. Okay. Um Okay, so Ah, uh, you can't see it. All right, so this is fine. We'll do that. And that that's gonna be good here. Yeah. All right. This is the game log of Madison Baumgartner. Um, we're gonna go to this, and then I want to kind of inspect. Like, okay, so you can kind of see terrible September, right? And you have this moment here. And what was interesting about this, we're gonna see is the fastball velocity, 90 or so. And for me. I need to see Bumgarner around like 91 because down here, 93 uh, in in uh, May of 2011. Sorry, uh, May 11th, 2021. I need to drink more coffee first. Well, that's interesting. So the best thing to do is bold and at the end of the session, filter the bolded players and format wherever you want. Thanks a lot for a tree. Um, it's more be it's gonna be the cells though is the thing so like I'm gonna change like one cell I'm gonna say like that's wrong or this is wrong or something you know that that's that's the only issue I have um, but anyway Nesta Cortez I'm not gonna project well and I'm really sorry I guess what I'm getting at guys is that it's 93 over here 92 and then 92 92 like he's actually was had decent velocity for a while but then he got hurt here between uh june 2nd and the 16th and he never got back to it 90 89 89 89 90 90 but we're not seeing 91 again and i think that was a relic that was like a an anomaly which makes me not excited whatsoever what was the result of this season i know ours is a little bit different than fan graphs for some reason at times 467 yeah okay 118 versus 117 no idea why um yeah they, there's some like odd discrepancies every so often i can't tell you why i think we actually i know we i made it a note to not include intentional walks maybe or something and that's why the walk rate is different 
I mean, intentional walk's the idea, too. So if you remove the two, then it removes the walk rate. <laughs> I think that's intuitive. Like, when we do an assessment, it's like, oh, no, his walk rate's above eight. It's like, yeah, but it includes, like, four intentional walks. So he actually has a 7.5. Like, oh, that's different. That's a huge deal. But it's just not the one that people know. So that's why that's different. And that's probably why the whip is different, too, because... Uh, because it's a lower, fewer intentional walks. Um, anyway, for Bumgarner, I mean, this seems right. The whip seems uh, also right, because I do expect him to go back up. Like, I'm serious. This seems like a, like a good projection. <laughs> I don't think I need to touch him. Uh, you know, on... Nothing has really changed here. Basel was a little bit harder, and it was 89.90 versus 88. That is something to note. Like, is he going to be a 127 whip guy? I mean, yeah. Honestly, I think it's just going to get kind of worse and tough. Anything really changed? No, no. More zone of that higher finally you should usage was the same it's funny they were like this whole thing about we want to increase this curveball usage because we think there's so much value of this like, yeah 34% CSW and then like that's good though good high strike percentage with it yeah but this isn't anything anymore it's because they have it listed as a slide versus a cutter it confuses our stuff in the back end yeah, I'm just going to keep this one as it is. I think this is good. As far as innings goes, um, that might be a little high on the projection. I think that's the only pushback I have. Is that I probably would lower this to about a 1... Like a 1 6. Sorry. That's really it. So that means game started goes down to... I mean, yeah, it's a 28 is right. So yeah, 26 starts for just... Wow, that's actually really bad. How many... I'm spending so much time on the first one. How many short starts did he have? Two, four, four. I have a good amount in the beginning. If I'm doing the math right, like 150 over 26. That's not as bad as I thought. If it's out of over 28, like. Oh, yeah, that's the same thing. Okay, yeah. Cool. All right, we're doing that. Zach Gallen. We have a fun one. Uh, I can pretty much do this without looking up stuff at this point. Um. I don't expect a 9% walk rate. An ERA should be a little... Eh, it's not a bad projection. This should be better, though. I expect more than 26 starts, too. Actually, no. No, I don't. I'm going to hide this one. What's the point of this right now? Um, yeah, I'm only touching these. I mean, this is a good indicate helper for me for this. I probably won't touch this though. Actually, yeah, no, no, I will. I absolutely will. Okay. So, so for Gallon, the main issue, guys. Uh, amazing called strike rate on his fast one. It's actually the most underrated thing I think about Gallon. Look at these rates. These are these are exceptional. Um, it's weird though to have this low of a strike rate on a fastball where you get that many called strikes on it. Right? Like this is a really great CSW, but a low strike rate, which pretty much says that it's not put into play like a lot. It's such a high called strike rate, but it's just not swung at. You know, if I go to, uh, 
Yeah, 32%. This is absurd. <laughs> That's such a low swing rate. The average swing rate, I think, of a, of a hitter is like 45 or something like that. Um, and 32% on a fastball is like... Guys are so ultra patient with him. If you look at everything else, changeup is 53%. Cutters is 50%. Curveball is 50%. Everyone's swinging at all the other stuff, but they just aren't swinging at the heaters. That's just incredible sequencing. And I think, honestly, it's a uh, a showcase of how good Gallon is of utilizing all of his pitches. See, look at this. Curveball, cutter, in changeup, all above 10%. Can be thrown in any count, essentially. But it is really wild. You throw a fastball over 50% of the time, and that's, that's what happens. That's crazy. It's really just, um, it's startling. By the way, we are absolutely improving this um, for, for PL7. It feels really weird to look at it like this, by the way. And everything that I'm thinking about, I'm like, oh yeah, right, that's, that's changed and this has changed. So, can't wait. Uh, but anyway, um, so the story of Gallon's season, as I go back here go away I oh I remember this game so well oh he was cruising through five and then like got blitz for four and runs across 15 pitches in the first frame sell down up for five after oh wait that's not the one I'm thinking of <laughs> not at all where is it I thought it was a different I thought it was San Francisco what am I thinking of 2020 or is it this one Ah, uh, this is the one. Okay. The previous game. King game is six and a lot of the final turn runs. Yeah. Uh, no, I actually think I am thinking of 2020. Um, but anyway, I uh, Gallon is someone who needs to get his cutter and essentially he needs to get all four pitches back. This year he had his fastball going and sometimes his, I think his curveball more than others. Like, this is not the changeup of old. Look at this. 36%, 32%, and then 23%. The strike percentage is everything you guys really should be focusing on, actually. The more I... It's fascinating to me. You guys know me. I, I've been pushing. Okay, CSW is a huge thing. Swing strike rate is a huge thing. Money pitches, O swing, zone, zone percentage and stuff. Well, that's because strike percentage wasn't... Isn't inside of this, Right? I don't, I don't have strike percentage inside of fan graphs. Uh, you know, I can move me out of the way for a second. You guys can see there's no strike percentage inside of fan graphs backend. So I didn't have this, this data to, to reference all the time. I had no place to get it. I, uh, so then we added it. And the thing I realized the most was it's all about how often they get strikes and then how often they get crushed by it. So if you have a high strike percentage and it's not a high batting average allowed. That's fantastic. I mean, honestly, it's more about um, maybe it's a high bacon or really like a, a WOBA against it. But, you know, we weren't able to get that stuff last year. Uh, you know, with uh, with Inside Edge, it's not what they provided, which is fine. But that is really the, the essence of like, is it a good pitch or not? Less so. I mean, this stuff is a good indication of how they're getting it, but like, it's just... At the end of the day, it's like, are they throwing strikes? <laughs> Great. Are they getting crushed by them? No? Great. <laughs> that, that's it. You know? So, you got to get this up. 57. Under 60 is always a red flag to me. Uh, you want to see 65 is like, yes. That's what you're going for. Um, 58. Oh, my God. Come on, man. Yeah, this is what... So, he had 66 before, but 50. So, cutters, changeups, and curveballs all fail to get strikes. Meanwhile, this is still getting a 25% called strike rate, like 66%. Ah, Gallon, you're so close. You just need this to unlock this again. Oh my God, this is the worst plus percentage. <laughs> That's so terrible. If you don't know plus percentage, it's a uh, essentially it's a stat I came up with that builds on CSW is like CSW being like the pure good for a pitcher. Uh, plus is another step forward of also including outs. When I throw this pitch, I throw 100 pitches and five of them result in 
outs in play, that's a 5% out percentage, right? So CSW plus out percentage, and then you add in foul balls because that's not a negative, so I'm kind of adding it as a plus because it's, they swung and did not do a bad thing to you. I think that's just inherently a good thing. It's better than like, yeah. You know, sometimes it is a negative, but I think it, foul balls outweigh uh, benefit to the pitcher more so than they do negatively to the pitcher. So create a plus percentage. Generally with these, if you get 50%, it's like killing it. Normally high 40s is what I'm seeing. Uh, like I think if I, yeah, let's take a look at this really quickly. Uh, just just pitch types on four seamers. Let's see what we get here. Cross starters. And then if I rank this by plus. So here's like above 50% guys. And then when you get to four, it's around like high 40s. Then you get down to 14, you have the low guys, which are 30s. Right? Like the average around here is probably going to be like 45, something like that. Yeah. So that's for fastballs, though. But for sliders, like, expect even higher. Some guys have ridiculous. Yeah, DeGroms was a 60%, which is just absurd. Aaron Ashby's up here. Shocking. Like, you guys can see that this is effective. Wow, that's actually really high for Vince Velasquez. Plus, plus. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, that's good. Right, so it weighted, like, over 100. Oh, that's funny. Hey, what's up? I... Uh, what am I? What is this? The Krethau. Krethoff? I don't know. Thank you so much for uh, for subbing with Pride Man. Uh, it's good to see Aaron, by the way. Plus, plus sounds hilarious. Uh, look, I want to say one thing about plus when it comes to pitcher list. The reason it's PL plus is because we are the only ones that actually have PL inside of plus. Disney, nah. All right? You have DI. <laughs> ESPN, that's ES. We are actually PL and us. It's our community. PL Plus essentially is the community subscription. It made so much sense to me. It's PL and us is plus. I felt so <laughs> smart. And I was like, we deserve to have plus. <laughs> oh, man. And like, so I actually wanted initially, I remember this so distinctly. This is the important lesson I learned um I, I learned this lesson which was like just impaired I'm gonna move you guys down here so you guys can see it I I I wanted the logo to be PLUS because it's the PL and then us and I was really insistent on this so it's like I think this is so cool we can showcase this we can have we can split the logo in two and make it plus you can even add another plus sign at the end to make it even more emphasized so I say, you know what? Let's go to the staff. Fast was like, no, Nick. It should be PL and then the plus sign. It's like, no, it's got to be the plus thing. It's like, let's just ask the staff, see what they say. So we put it to the staff. And I said, hey, guys, we're just trying to make some decisions on logos. You know what? We felt like it might be best just to kind of get a group perspective and see if there's any sort of overwhelming response. Here are the three different logos. Just leave an emoji of which one you want, A, B, or C. And I think PL plus, the one that we use now, had 64 votes while mine, the PLUS, had like two. <laughs> I was like, okay. All right. I think we're going to go with the PL plus. Uh, yep. Uh, you le learn a valuable lesson. Sometimes it's just, you know what? There's some things I'm good at and some things I lose sight of. And it's important to take a step back when you need to. God. And ultimately, I think, yeah, I think it was the right call. Because it's too long. Plus, plus, and it's just confusing. Oh, yeah, it's pictureless and then the plus sign. I get it. It's more. It's so much simpler and better. Just didn't have the PL and the US. Okay, anyway, so for Zach Allen, let's go back to this. I. Uh, here's the thing. I believe. Okay, so the walk rate's going to go down. I don't think that he is a 9% walk rate guy. Like. I understand the 11%, 8.6, 9.4 last year. I think he gets better is the thing, right? I, I don't think that his three pitches are destined to be that bad. You know, we lose sight of this a lot. I certainly do. I see a season from a guy, and instantly that means to me, 
oh this is who he is you know like oh this is like there's no we have to accept him as this now and there's nothing else um but for a young guy like gallon no he's gonna be going through things i mean for example he had the elbow injury came back had a hamstring injury came back and i think did he even get shut down before the end of the year no he went through the end and hey he was doing better here what happened here i'm always curious when you see like let's see this ah i led with him on the last day or on, the, on that Saturday but before, huh? Just twenty five percent of these things on it. Yeah, so I just did a whole season's worth of stuff because it was more of the same here. I mean, yeah. Kerbo was working in this one, change up and cutter were not. Once again. Oh, I don't have strike percentage here. I really should. I think we actually are doing that. I think this whole thing. Uh, yeah, we'll talk another time. <laughs> uh, in this one, change of actually had five whiffs out of 20, which is nice. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Yeah, this against the Dodgers. We weren't starting him here because 4-4-3. Four, four, three, three, yeah, he wasn't on like good. But he's going deeper again. Yeah, all right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna say this is an 8.5. Uh, a little bit better on this. So and then the whip should be a one. I'm gonna say like he's not a 129 whip guy. I don't I don't believe that at all. 111, 123. Okay. I'm gonna put him at a one, two, one. Lower the walk rate, lower the, the hits a little bit. Game started and innings pitched. So I'm gonna put Gallon around kind of the same the same innings pitched as, as Bumgarner. He just went through injury stuff. I'm probably gonna say this is a 150. The Diamondbacks are gonna let him fly when they can. But yeah, he hasn't thrown a ton since 2019. Like 2019 is when he got pushed, right? And then he went all the way through in 2020. This is the first year of like, oh no, things happened. So I'll I'll, I'll do this. I'll put him at, I'll put him at 160, but at I gotta increase his starts then. 375 seems about right. Like he's not gonna do this. But he's not a 4-3. I think that's a good safe projection there. Okay, strikeout percentage should be about 26. Actually, no, I'm saying there's a rebound coming, so let's do let's do 27. Okay. What up, Zappy Alex? <laughs> First time chat. Okay, uh, the God tell me, man, how do I pronounce this? The Kretch South? Th oh, the uh, oh the th the secret sauce is what it is. The secret thoth. Oh, I get it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Love it. All right. I'm just gonna call you secret sauce if that's okay. I uh, I don't know what s spawned that idea, but I think that's pretty funny. Um. So, okay, I gotta now acknowledge right now when it comes to the Arizona Diamondbacks rotation, this is the biggest question, right? I'm kind of gonna accept um, the projection here, but I'm gonna change these two things. Like, as far as game started for Taylor Widener and Tyler Gilbert, I'm gonna probably keep it this low. Uh, it's kind of hilarious to me how they have. Like, where are the other starts? <laughs> right? Like, look at this. You need you need five guys of 30, essentially, right? To get through, um, or 32, to get through a full season. You're missing at least one full starter here. No, you're missing, a, like, two. But these are the only five here. 
Hey man, this is uh, this is me just getting my work done, and I'm just super happy you guys want to hang out as I do it. I, uh, so, so this is what we're gonna do here. I think Taylor Widener is better than this. I'm gonna give him a benefit. This is not right. There's no way that Tyler Gilbert is a 121 with 389 ERA guy. If this is what he was, like, and it has a regular spot in the in the Diamondbacks rotation. This probably is one of the biggest steals in NFBC. You know? I highly doubt it. I'm going to do it from December 1st. And I'm going to see if I can even find Tyler Gilbert on here. 702. <laughs> I mean, you guys can see it right now for whatever reason. But trust me. There he is. Tyler Gilbert. 702. 296th. Pitcher off the board. 702. Yeah, no. That's not... That's not gonna happen. So, this isn't right. We gotta... We gotta change this. Coffee cheers. Hey, hey, what's up, Newts? Good to see you, man. Yeah, this, uh... I actually started drinking coffee again this week. I stopped. Um, I stop every year for at least two weeks. I only survived two weeks this year, but normally it's like a month. Just to, like, reset my body and showcase I am not addicted to coffee i can stop if i need to um but then i realized i have all this work i need to do and it helps so much oh my god like it's absurd uh mm. that reminds me actually uh i'm really lucky today why because i get to talk to andrew triggs at one o'clock uh so if you guys have a question that you want me to ask andrew triggs definitely let me know in the comments i'll write it down he's a hilarious guy i uh, a gnome through a friend of a friend he's a friend of a friend of a friend like i went to an event with a friend who said hey i know andrew tricks i'm like oh you do <laughs> great uh i want to bring him on the podcast that'd be cool um so uh all right so let's establish luke weaver first and i think this is kind of reasonable i don't really want to touch this this all seems fine and by the way, I don't know how you guys navigate, like, finding pictures on the site. I'm actually really curious what your process is. For me, I literally just type into the URL. Like, I may, I, I insisted on this. You know, the smart thing to do is, oh, we'll give them all an ID. And then, you know, then, like, have this complicated URL. It's like, no, I want to be able to just say the player's name and type it in and be done. I... Uh, and that's it. The only annoyance of this is, yes, there are players with the same name. It's going to happen. So we're going to just have hyphens for those. And that's that. But for those use cases, the benefit otherwise is just so great um, that uh, that we're doing that. Uh, we might do it like if they're retired and there's, a, there's like a second person. There's one that's retired and one that's not. We might add like hyphen R or something. <clears throat> to make it like, hey, they are the retired one or something like that. But anyway, I don't know how you guys use it. That's how I do it. And you should too. Um, let's just see how this looks now. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So Weaver. He was that good? How many? Oh, very, very limited. Huh. The problem with Weaver is that he still only is two pitch. It's just changeups and sliders. Uh, sorry, and four seamers. The cutter... There's this one year, 2019, 32% CSW with it, got got called strikes with it, got a 71% strike rate. Ugh, he had a high strike rate. This is the problem with strike rate, though, is that sometimes it comes with a bad average. Hey, look at this. Lowered its average by a lot. What happened? No swings higher. Zone rate went down. Good job. First pitch. Where is first pitch? First pitch. Huh. True abstract. Oh, man. TFT is cool. What? Hey, look at you. Uh, hey, thanks so much, Danny, for the follow, man. Uh, yeah, guys, if you were curious if I'm going between, like, YouTube and this. Nah, nah. We tried YouTube, and they, they didn't like the fact that I was watching completely legal games that I had every right to do things with. <laughs> I was completely free on their website. 
but but YouTube wasn't having it. So I. Uh, this is interesting. Did he change his approach with it? So if you're curious, what are these things? Uh, this is essentially the zones of the of the plate, but like I have essentially done it in like in lines. So essentially, so this is a uh, location of pitches arm side. So essentially, how long is he throwing it just along this? Um, still doesn't do this. A glove side. He's a glove side guy with it. So this is actually not right. It's more about this. Actually, ultra. That's really interesting. Hey, look at you. This is great. So Weaver, Weaver did a really good job of locating his fastball better. So this is horizontal M lock, like horizontal middle. So essentially you have the X axis. Just think of it this way. So like arm side, middle, glove side. So you have like the zone in three boxes. And H M lock is just horizontal middle. So location. Uh, so instead of going middle, 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 he separated out. It played the east west game way better. That's really good. That's how you that's how this happens. That's how you get average reduced. Good job, buddy. Uh, so then the high location, so he elevated more too. So that's high lo high location. And then vertical middle, right? So now we're going vertically middle. Uh less, great. And he didn't really go low. Low lock is low. And then hard of the plate. Wow. Yeah, avoided that a ton. Fascinating. So think of this like um, if you know like the zones and stuff. Uh, this is like one, two, this is three, six, nine. This is two, five, eight. This is one, four, seven. This is just eight. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm just fascinated by this. And now with this, he avoided the middle of the plate again. Oh, you know what? I think this is, you know what, I'm gonna hold on a second. I'm gonna take a, take a step back. I think uh, we see this for everybody. Oh yeah, yeah, this is a stupid bug. Hold on a second. If it doesn't load the whole thing, if I go too quickly, then it, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Nah, all of our location stuff is bad. <laughs> our location stuff isn't good. All right, fine. Uh, I'm going to ignore that. Um, our location data has been messed up for a while, for 2021. Uh, things got messed up. If you guys remember, there used to be a strike zone plot on the left here. And we removed it because it was just misleading. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he protect, he attack, he stack percentage. That's funny, Asher. Yeah, sorry to mislead you guys about that. Uh we should probably, we're going to say this, not going to be an issue for PL7. Like, you'll understand how, why I'm so confident in that. Uh, not an issue. So. Uh, but it is something to look at, just in general. Um, anyway, with Luke Weaver, I think this is a little aggressive negatively. At the very least, like the... Um, like these things, strike percentage is the same. You don't worry about this culture. This is all, this isn't, none of this is a result of location. This is a result of event, right? Or outcome. So the fact that he did improve his, uh, his strike percentage and lowered his average is still a legitimate thing. Um, I'm gonna help him out here. And how many, was he starting by the end? I think he was, right? Yeah, that whip, that, those, okay. He earned a gallows pull. I mean, his four seamer was dominant. Huh. Fascinating. Ha, I forgot about that, that Navi thing there. All right. This isn't the worst projection. I'm going to lower this, though. Not 
that's all. I just want to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna benefit this a little. Um, I don't know if he's a 23. Guys, I'm taking so long on. I mean, I guess an hour per team. That takes 30 hours. If I, that means I need to do 15 of these streams to get through all the projections. All right, I guess I'm doing it every morning next week. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to have to breeze through some teams, but I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that. If you guys are cool with that too, I might stream over the week. I'm not even kidding. I got to get this stuff done. Um, right. If it's an hour per five players, essentially I have, that's not even enough. All right. I'm taking so long. What did I want to say? I want to see the strikeout rates. Yeah, this is all fine. This is fine. Yep. I think actually this is a high walk rate. I'm gonna bring that down. That's probably that's part of the whip coming down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This stuff, fine. Whatever. He just hasn't been healthy. But he should have free. You know, he should be free to go. So that's okay with me. Um, Tyler Gilbert. You are not a 3.15 ERA guy. I'm sorry. You, you just, you just aren't. Um, what are the, uh, wait, where's Mark Kelly in this? Where's Mario Kelly? Oh, he's a free agent? He was at the time, probably. Did they sign a deal? They must have. Exercise the option. Okay, so he's not enough. Okay. Cool. Uh, so we have him back. 23 starts. So, all right, there, there's your... We found some more innings, guys. We found them. <laughs> uh, so that means, let's say you just take away Widener for a second. Two goes here, two goes there. That's four. Seven goes here. That's 11. Uh, you're still missing some, but all right. Uh, we'll get to Kelly in a second. Great. Another 12 minutes for a six-man rotation. I'm going to move quickly with Gilbert. I uh, game started. That seems like a high. Yeah. How? Oh, cause of relief innings. Fair enough. Um, that's fine. This no pushing you up. This is not a 20%. You're not a 20% strikeout guy. Yeah. You're a, uh, you know, no, no, you are an 18.4. And we're going to go with a 4-3. Nope, 4-4-7. Four, four, What's your walk rate, typically? Yeah. Cool. Just want to double check those things. Oh yeah, Brent Strom. Oh, that's right. Forgot about that. Just want to double check on all of this. Yeah, the guy is... It's a cutter and a four-seamer. There's no way this cutter has a 188 batting average allowed, guys. It's, it's just no way. Don't know what to tell you. Um, that's extreme ball and play rate. Uh, does not have a whiff pitch. Yeah, this is... I'm actually going to lower this more. Uh, this seems right. Sorry, Taylor. You're not good. <laughs> um, Tyler. Taylor's good, though. Taylor's better. Taylor Widener is way more interesting. 
Well, the cutter is a little something for uh, for for Gilbert. It's something. Hi. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, we're gonna go to Widener though. So Widener throws what? Ninety. Oh. Oh. Oh, well, he was hurt, right? Wasn't he? What, what was his injury? Undisclosed. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> uh, oh, that was alright. There was a... Um... Oh, my God. God help us. re his groin. That's what it was. Okay, so he should be alright with that. That's good. But he also went through COVID. Um, I think his slider and changeup can both be good when they're done right. Like these. Here you go. The changeup can has a lot of yeah, a lot of potential. The changeup. When he had success, like relief, 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 whatever. But he had these games like eight strikeouts. All of a sudden, look at these whiffs. All of a sudden, and I got 15% swing strike rate across the board. That's really good. Sure, it was the Pirates. Fine. Against San Francisco. 13%. 13.5. Like, these are the days where one of these pitches works, and those mostly the change it looks like here. Like, there is something to it. I think this is one of the days that I beat fast. Like, like I streamed him. Like, I might have streamed this. Because I thought it was funny and poetic. In cores. Oh, that's five blocks, too. Now, in these games, is his fastball velocity up? 93.5, 92, 93. Like, I imagine, actually, normally when you see relief here, it goes up, but it's... Yeah, it did. Okay. So he has potential with it, too. Um, this is pretty good. I'm gonna... This is all good. This is... I'm fine with this. I'm not gonna touch anything until I widen it. Yeah, sure. I'm not expecting him to be good, but you know, he could, but I expect him to get more starts than Taylor than Tyler Gilbert though. I'll say that. So I'm gonna put him at twenty starts? No, he's not even in the rotation according to this. It's Tyler Gilbert as opposed to Widener. So fine, they're gonna fight for it. We don't know which one it is. Okay. Uh, Merrill Kelly. Yeah, seems right. <laughs> I'm not even going to like... <laughs> I don't really feel the need to take any more time on Merrill Kelly. Uh, maybe more innings than this. Like, he should be a workhorse for them in this way. I'm going to say 175 or 170. Uh, and then that would mean... If I'm saying like a 5.7 IPS, what is that? Like a 20... Yeah, that's fine. Let's say 27 and 165. Right? What is that? 165 or 27? Oh, that's really good. Let's say 20. Let's say 160 then. 28, 160. Yeah, let's just keep up the 20 and 160s, huh? Is there a projection for Kale Smith? I. Uh, good question. I think there is. Uh, doesn't he hurt with. Like, didn't he get, like, Tommy John or something? I could have sworn he got hurt. Oh, he got a suspension. That's right. Oh, yeah, it would say right here if he is. Fascinating. I'm not doing a projection for him. So you guys got to understand, I have to put a limit to how much I do. Um, I think I told them, like, hey, whoever you guys have a uh, a certain amount of starts for, like, we'll do a cutoff. I think it was around seven. But there are some other, like, random string stragglers that, like, I'm sure at some point I'm going, oh, cool, I need, a, I need to do a projection for him, too. And I didn't do one. And I'll probably throw it in. But uh, my Kopech, I said, no, no, I want to make sure I have a Kopech one because I actually believe that he's something. Or Drew Hutchinson, I don't necessarily need to. 
like there's a lot of these guys like I uh, like Homer Bailey's even gonna do it like these are the free agents I'm just gonna be like I don't know guys free agents oh god well this isn't any more oh I should ask them to uh, I I didn't realize that I thought I got this after the lockout I'm going to ask them to do that for me. Don't let me forget here. Yeah, this was uh, November twenty third. Yeah, right. Uh, let's let's see what it is with the angels. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna not do that right now. Uh, I'm gonna be getting an updated version. So for them right now, it's only four or five, but then there are also um, Syndergaard gets added to this too. Demers is so interesting. They have a 43. Now nah, it should be better than this. <laughs> hey, what's up? Uh, uh, what what is this one? Uh, what's up? Excel. Thank you. Finally got there. I'm not worried about accents actually for this because it's gonna be automatically put in a thing and it's just gonna mess it all up because. Computers and sites don't know how to handle accents yet. Fortunately, we don't have to think about it right now. This might be my favorite one in Stream Beats. It's just such a good vibe. Okay, so we got all this. Taylor Widener, I feel like this is fine. Merrill Kelly, we changed this and this. I'm just going to do that to align with them. Uh, strikeout rate seems right. Walk rate seems right. Like, this is... It's Merrill Kelly. So, we're done with the, the Diamondbacks, y'all. We did it. Get out of here. We're going to move on to the to Atlanta. Yeah, it's just a, just a good feel, you know, Felix? to Freed. This is too high. Otherwise, it seems pretty good. I mean, yeah, this is I don't know why you wouldn't project like a 110 whip now. Right? Like, he's done it for two straight years. If anything, you could say like he should be better. A 125 steamer! No steamer! Get out of here! <laughs> I don't really see why you shouldn't project a 110. He did it for two straight years. He's a different pitcher than he was in 2019. I, I would honestly, I would say that I'm more bullish. Like, I think he's a 24.5. Let's go here. Uh, walk rates. I mean, he fell last year a lot. Um, I'll, I'll go into the I'll go into the pitch list stuff in a second. No, he should be going 32 starts. I don't see why not. Fine, I'll give him 30. The 180 innings, because he has a good IPS to him. Let's go 78. <laughs> hey, thanks so much, Star Minutes. Good to see you again, man. 
Oh, thanks so much for the sub. Man, that's not even a prime sub. That's a straight sub. You're awesome, man. Thank you. I. Uh, all right. So then ERA is, yeah, that's about right. You know, if he, uh, the home run rates are not an issue with him, though. It's always been this way. You know, he's not really a home run allowing guy. Uh, I think this, I mean, five, five off rates are just too low. And I think he's a better pitcher than, like, he's improved. Uh, so the main things are the curveball took more shape than the slider. The slider actually came down a bit in my view of how like overall effective it was. Um, this used to be, oh, this is interesting. This is actually not what I expected, but huh, kind of expected this number to be higher in 2019. Maybe I'm thinking about it wrong. But like it was moving in the direction that it would be like a 20% swing strike rate pitch and then it never did. Excuse me, that's why I'm kind of thinking of it like this. Uh, the curveball got, I want it, yeah, that sounds about right. But I want this to be, this is the thing, I want the strike rate to be higher on it. It's my only issue, this was much better. The command of the fastball for Freed was better this year. Sure, it's a higher batting average allowed. He got in the zone more. It, it, it helped him a ton. And he was able to... This was worth this, essentially, because of this. Because it's such a high ground ball rate. Um, so what was the rough patch? I mean, there was this. I remember... <laughs> <laughs> oh man so funny story i uh, i often get um what's up andrew twitcher list that's funny um but i uh, yeah i'm still ready for baseball too good to see you fat def um so i remember this this happens every year like i put out the list and i remember not being I was very consensus chalk with Max Freed. I wasn't saying like, oh, he's the guy I have to go for, but I, I'm fine with him. Like I had him like 23. I think that's like right around consensus or so. And then I remember after this start against the Marlins, there was someone who tagged me on Reddit and said, I can't believe I, uh, you know, Stonewater convinced me to get Max Freed. Like how could, ugh, like I should never listen to them. And I was like, what? I don't, I don't feel like I like said much of anything about Max Freed. And then he went on the IL. I'll, and then I was, then I was like, oh yeah, guys, like this is not going to be his season. And it's always so hard. It is so hard after this. I mean, you guys see this in retrospect. Like, are you kidding? He had a three one three eleven ERA last year, and that includes allowing fourteen earned runs in his first eleven innings. <laughs> right? I. Uh, in retrospect, it's so easy for us to feel so foolish about it. But when you're in that moment and it's the middle of April and you're just having so much regret that, oh, you went and got Max Freed and you didn't get Freddy Peralta. Oh, man. You know, I should have done that. I should have gotten that other guy. And so Joe Musker was killing it right now. Like, why did I get Max Freed? And it's, it's just so silly. It's so funny. Like, we got to look back on this. And he came back from the injury on, on the 5th and, like, it was dope. <laughs> what was it? I, I know there's no ERA up here, uh, which once again, subject to change. But if I, um, if I get rid of the fifth here, so I start in the fifth, right? So you move this, that's 43 over 165, 43 over 165 times nine. 234 ERA. Do you realize that? After he got hurt. His first he started the season hurt. Came back. Had a 235 ERA the entire rest of the year. I'm tweeting that out. <laughs> That's kind of crazy.
That's really nuts. And what's the whip during that time too? Uh, 36 plus uh, 116, 152. Oh my God. Seriously? 152 over 165? that number and one it was a point nine point nine two what was the injury hamstring oh so that's actually that stinks Uh, that's not as convincing to me, but still. Hey, what's up, Cam? Good to see you, man. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, happy holidays to you as well. Hope you guys are doing something fun for the New Year celebration. I am going to be watching Michigan football. It's the first time in ages that I like have football to watch that matters. <laughs> my sister went there, um, and my college did not have a football team. Um, so since 2003, let me show you there was the Rose Bowl, but like it felt like second secondary didn't really matter like this is actually wait a second they're playing in the game that truly matters because we've lost against OSQ for like 20 years <laughs> oh my god they better not lose the George that would suck I would hate that so much Uh, all right, so Max Reed, I'm gonna, I'm kind of in on Max Reed, guys. Did the walk rate, walk rate must have gone down, 6%. Dude, I'm, I'm serious, I think Max Reed might be super underrated. <laughs> oh, that's funny, Tar. Uh, oh, that's a good question. Yeah, Soroka is not on this list. Uh, Soroka should come back June, July. So I'd expect like 12 starts. Something like that. That's a great point. Uh, where is Soroka on here? Is he like just ignored completely? Yeah. Great call. I'll, I'm going to uh, make a little thing here. That's literally uh, just... I... Uh, we're just going to have that exist. Great call. Uh, yeah, so this is... The, I, I thank you a ton, uh, the Fat Def and Sabertooth. Don't you dare suggest that again. Um, yeah, guys, keep me honest of other starters that might make a significant amount um, of, uh, of innings. You know, in, it's I don't know if we're going to be able to do a whole thing with injury transactions this year. I think for next year, we want to have this whole thing about, like, hey, monitoring injuries better. I think that's something that's not done well enough on a lot of sites. And to be able to just have a complete transaction log of when they were injured, I think, would just be the coolest thing ever. And be able to say, oh, yeah, right, cool. What was the injury then? You go to the injuries tab on us, and, like, you can see... Um, Wait, is we? I would. Oh my god. Oh, that would be so cool. What if, like, what if for this? So, wait, wait, hold on. Oh man. Uh, why doesn't it have full season here? I. Uh, yeah, yeah, stop this. So, what if, like, oh, that'd be awesome. Inside this game log between this and this right what if we had a line that said like hamstring injury you know missed x amount of time right like 
that would be really cool. Inside of the game log, you can see the interruptions. That would be so dope. You know? Or like, even if it's just like a day-to-day -day thing. Like, you could see inside of it. And you, you'd be able to say, like, turn off injuries, turn them on. It would be a little thing here. It would say, like, show this or show that. Uh, that would be so cool. Um, so, Kyle Muller, reminder, he's here. He's gonna he's gonna be inside included, I think. Actually, no, he's not because yeah, I don't know how much he's gonna actually sing. So, uh, Tucker Davidson and him are probably gonna split some. Yeah, I don't know if he really gets that many starts. I was really kind of excited about him just because like oh yeah, there is a potential here, but I don't know how much we'll see. I. Uh, all right, I'll add him to this. Thanks as always, Fir Tree. You rock. Um, all right, let's get back to this, though. Uh, so, Freed, I'm making a better projection for. Charlie Morton, this is absurd. 3.8? No. No. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say he's a 3.4 guy. 3.8 is ridiculous. 1.2? No. Now this is a question of like how much he starts. Fine. Charlie Morton is so good. Like why would you why would you not think that he is oh, this is this is the problem that's pulling it down, but like no no no. Essentially you should be this, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the strikeout rate, by the way, should be higher than this. Should be at twenty eight. Let's just hit point one to make it look cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, 33 starts, 33 starts. I mean, I am going to predict some injury, though. So this is fine with me. I will project some injury in there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I've read him more than really close, so. The strikeouts should be the difference maker, but it's a... Uh, But then again, I believe in the ERA a little bit better for free. Yeah, okay. We're going to move on. That uh, that I just so highly disagreed with. Uh, Ian Anderson is a, a tricky one. Um, and by the way, if you guys are enjoying this, uh, I will make sure that I do these a ton. I might do these at some weird hours at times, too. If you guys are cool with that, like a random evening surprise stream. Because there are certainly nights where I'm just kind of bored and I want to be doing this stuff, but I don't feel like the energy to do it. If I all of a sudden say like I'm streaming, then at like 9 at night or something. If you guys are down for that, I'm so down for like two hours of just doing this. Because I'm telling you right now, I gotta, I have so much work I need to do. I have to do all of these. I have to write 20,000 words or whatever for the, the top 200. I need to oversee all of the things uh, PL7 is. Uh, and doing everything that I can possibly do to make it so that the devs and the database engineers have to do as little as possible uh, so that they can take care of as much as they can. Uh, I, we have PitchCon coming. January 26th to 29th, that Wednesday to Saturday. Can't wait for that. Um, all these marketing things that we're doing with it. Uh, yeah, it's it's so much. <laughs> so much. So that means I don't have a social life for January. And I will be spending a lot of evenings twiddling my thumbs otherwise. So I would feel so much better just hanging out and doing these. So if you guys are up for it. Literally, I need one person to say, yes, I would watch at 9 p.m. Eastern time on a random Friday. <laughs> Wednesday? Wednesday. I'm probably going to get myself Fridays. Uh, maybe not sometimes, honestly. Okay. Uh, Ian Anderson. Uh, yes! Thank you, Cam. Thank you, physics man. That's all I needed. You guys rock. <laughs> I'm serious. I... Uh, need help with that okay cool Ian Anderson you want to know the coolest thing about Ian Anderson 
The coolest thing by far. Curveballs. Look at this. Look at these games. 13 whiffs out of nowhere. Actually, he had it, I think, against. No, he didn't against it. Yeah, he had this worst start ever at getting cores. I remember this. No strikeouts. He got pushed out right away. It was terrible. It shows him the next time against Miami. He throws 13 whiffs on those curveballs. 31? Oh, they were good. And guess what? They were still kind of good against the, uh, the the Giants, and then it wasn't anymore. <laughs> but this showcases, I think, the ceiling for uh, for Ian Anderson. If there's a day that he can actually get consistency on curveball whiffs. And thank you so much, Merc, for the sub. Uh, four months, man. That's awesome. Uh, th thoughts on Nick Martinez? Will he perform the same as Michaelis did from Japan? Nick Martinez, didn't he? Uh, you're talking about the Nick Martinez from the. Actually, I don't want to do it on this one. Let's do it on this one. You're talking about Nick Martinez from like years ago, on the Rangers. So he went off to Korea. Oh, Japan. Okay. I have not thought a. a Ink, inkling of him. I've I, not considered. So let's see this. Nick Martinez, Japan. Uh, did they have it here? They do. So how many innings was he throwing? 149 he did in 2021. Jeez, 190, 162 ERA. 103 whip. Okay. I think that's what you said, right? So, yeah, he was on the, the Rangers. Okay, so uh, St. Louis Feet Doc. It's actually kind of funny. That's an awesome name. Uh, here's the thing. Michaelis. You want to know the real reason why Michaelis had success? It's not because he was Michaelis. It's because he was on the Cardinals. Uh, the one thing I've been underrating that I think the most over the years. I've been, I underrate a lot of things. <laughs> But one I really am taking to heart this year, the Cardinals' defense is absurdly good. And it made a guy like Michaelis, who had a sub-9 K per 9, right? So that essentially means like a 22%, 20% strikeout rate. It made a guy like him better because he relied on balls in play, and the Cardinals are great at that. So Nick Martinez feels like the same way. It's just he's not going to go to the Cardinals. So I don't know if I'm a fan of that. Is there any sort of scouting report? Like, of what he's throwing now? Here we go. Beautiful. Oh, Viva Alberto's. Awesome. Speak of the devil. Ha. Huh. Well, I mean, I'm thinking of Michaelis from 2019. Uh, I think in 2018. I'm just, I just want to hear velocity. It's just a little I'm like velocity and if a secondary pitch changed. That's all I'm looking for. Act two Japan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Here we go. 91. Don't care. Ah, 94. What? What? That's that's incredibly significant. Huh. I mean, I'm not saying that 94 is all of a sudden makes him like a thing, but it's something. <laughs> you know, I mean, if, if he's able to do an 87, but I think it, it hit as high as actually. I, I really want to pr uh, give caution. I uh, what's going on with this track? Let's move on. Um. I, I really want to preach caution to you guys about uh, seeing this as he hit. Anytime I see hit, I ignore it. I don't. I don't care really what hit is unless it's like a hundred, because most guys who throw 93 can hit 96, you know. But they don't sit there. That's like that one moment where they save it, right? Hitting does not matter. They can also. They also probably hit 90. <laughs> you know, it's sitting. What is the average? That's that's what matters the most. So, because that's the frame of reference we talked about. Oh, his fastball is this. It's a 90. Like, 
Wasker Inoa throws a 96.5 mile per hour fastball, but he hits like 99 and 100, right? But it's 96.5, and that innately proves, you know, and that innately uh, suggests they can go outside of the range. The ones that we actually needed, someone was talking about this. I don't remember who, and I wish I could give proper credit. But there's something to be said, um, and I might look more into this, uh, about the guys who have a larger range of, um, I'm actually might have been Foolish Baseball. It might have been Bailey, uh, who said, like with Otani, that he could hit 100, but the fact that he doesn't sit there is like a way to, you know, DeGrom always sits 100. He should be actually, instead of sitting like 99, he should be sitting like 96. And that actually might be helpful for injury stuff, right? Like Garrett Cole also pushes it sometimes, but doesn't. Um, and the guys that have larger ranges in that way might speak to more health. Yeah, I'm sure. It <laughs> All right, Andrew, you understand what I'm saying. Maybe, yeah, maybe DeGrom just never pushes it, right? This is him just sitting and normally, like, taking it back. Fair enough. But that's interesting about Nick Martinez. Thanks for mentioning that. I will add him to this list. Um, okay, so we're going to go back to this. Ian Anderson, how am I projecting him? Walk rates are still an issue. I, uh, I imagine those kind of sticking around. 9.2, actually small improvement. That sounds fine to me. I imagine more innings in this though. He should be getting 28 starts, uh, which would push him up to 170 territory. That's fine with me. This does not include the postseason though, and that's another 17. So he threw last year 140, which yeah, 170 sounds right. Um, but yeah, this all seems, this is a favorable projection, but I think this seems right to me. I think he gets better, you know, actually, you know, I'm going to say 165. He's not an efficient pitcher. Wait, wait yeah, I, I'm, I'm doing this silly. 155. Uh, he should be underneath the 20, 21, 160. Yeah. Uh, it's. Whip has been a thing, right? Yeah. I'm going to say 3-6, though. Yeah. Okay. So, what did I change? I don't remember. <laughs> change this. Change this. This seems... Yeah, this, no, I didn't change that. I didn't change that. Okay. Wasp Green, Noah. Waska? Wasker. Right? Am I crazy? Yeah, okay. No, I'm not. This is the most polarizing guy in my head. Because I think his ability is so good. No problem, feed doc. Just keep uh keep asking all the questions, man. I'm here for him. All right. So Oscar Noah, hey buddy. Uh, you throw 96.5, which is crazy good. <laughs> I mean, that, that's fantastic velocity. The problem, I, uh, the problem is the plus percentage was really low. So he didn't really get the results that he wanted from this. Guys hit it a lot. 7% swing strike rate, 18%. This is not that good of a CSW, especially this low of a swing strike rate for a fastball. It's that hard. Um... But a 65% strike rate. And this isn't the worst thing ever. I think he got crushed by it, though, if I remember correctly. Uh, 
Oh, why don't I have home run five ball right here? Oh my god, Nick, are you serious? Ten home runs on it across six hundred. Yeah, that's not that bad. That essentially means one home run a game if he throws it sixty-seven percent of the time off the pitch. But not great. Slider should be yeah, it's better. It's way better. That's why he did that. Four home runs off of it. This pitch is nothing really. I mean, it, it maybe, but I don't really think that this is going to be anything to report on. Um, it's just a show me to lefties, which is fine. So I think it's actually kind of good to have that. Um, by the way, guys, I'm really sorry to tell you, but blurbs, this blurb, I don't know how much you guys used it. This is going to be going away. Don't worry, we have an amazing, we have amazing stuff that's gonna replace this. But the, uh, there are two reasons why we're getting rid of it. One, we felt that it was just too much information. We're, we're providing a lot of extra stuff this year for this. And this stuff is just repeated inside of the tables and all the other things that we're doing. The second one is that this is a lot of work. Over 2,500 of these were written last year. That's just so much work. And I wanted to, you know, I felt that it was, I was 50-50 on the necessity of it. I felt, you know what, guys, like, let's have you all do something else, you know? Um, actually, like, write articles and do the things you want to do, not this. Because this is, I mean, this was, it takes a village to do. Back in the day, I did it all myself. <laughs> You can believe it. My Januaries were the worst things in the world as I wrote 2,500 of those blurbs. Ah, <laughs> oh, I was a crazy man. Still am, but that was that was nuts. Oh my god. All right. Uh, cool. So anyway, so Wasker and Noah, what is the projection for him? 428 ERA. I think it's gonna be better than that. Um, yeah, he's a better pitcher than this. I don't think 20 starts. I think more like 25, which means like 140. Let's go 24. Um, I think he's a, I think he's a four. I'm going to say 402 just to be like, Hey, what's up? And I think this is more like a 26.1. It's kind of where my head is at. Yeah, 27% last year. Uh, I'm gonna say 1.21. He doesn't have any percent walk rate. Right? No, no, he's a 7.5 guy. I mean, am I crazy here? This is, this is a thing of the past. That, that's kind of what I'm trying to get at here. He's a home run threat. But the whip should be... Yeah, I don't... I think the scare is all about this. When he came back. But it was really one game. That was actually like truly detrimental. I mean, yeah, sure. These aren't like exceptional. Or anything. Like four innings and stuff. But he has like... The ability is still here. I mean, look at this. This is amazing. This is against the Yankees. Destroyed them. I mean, sure, it's a quality start. It's three, but I mean, this is really good stuff. The stupid hand injury. Man, he was, cr he was, oh, we were on top of the world all with our Oscar and Noah pickups. Oh my God. It was so great. Essentially after this, I woke up. I woke up here and realized, oh, he's throwing 97 now. Yeah, everyone grab him. And then he did tor poorly against the Cubs. I said, I don't care. He's still throwing 97. Still grab him. And then, yep, there you go. I think so. I hope I did. He wasn't that wild, y'all. And hold on like you're a character with plot armor dangling off a cliff. <laughs> yes! I can actually say we still hold on. <laughs> Uh. Oh yeah, a forty-one percent CSW in this game. Yeah, right. If you ignore the changeups. Right, he threw six changeups that brought it down to thirty-three. Like, 
what is this? Wait, hold on a second. This can't be right. How is, would that be this then? I think something's wrong. The math is something, something got messed up here. Oh, I probably, I probably did the math reversed. The, <laughs> I, I screwed this up. <laughs> oh, you guys can see this. I'm sorry. I, I'm looking at this. I, essentially, I'm looking at Wasker Noah's, um, I, this, essentially, the story of a season was like this. We picked them up here. I'm like, oh my God. Wait, what? I'm upset I didn't tell you to grab him the last time, but yeah, grab him now, right? And I should have done it after this. And I was like, what? You're not supposed to be good. I'm legit warming up to Oscar. He could get Miami next and selling one if it's a, if it's a stupid, sneaky stream. And that worked out. So, so then he did poorly against the Cubs. And then I still said, hold on to him. But I said this, and I screwed up. I reversed these two. Like, I thought it was 48 sliders, but not. So it, was, it wasn't a 41% seeing stuff between the two, but it's still. Right? Yeah, there you go. What did I say? Probably Oscar Wilde. He wasn't that wild. Yeah, that was okay. Quasker wild. And what did he do? He went here and went here. This was like he's cruising. Yeah. Ah, then he hit his hand. That stunk. I'm, I'm a fan of Wasker and Noah, guys. I can't help myself. So, going back to this, probably going to put him at 119. Nah, I'll leave it at 121. I'll be conservative. Fine. Yeah, I completely changed the Watts Green Noah one. Uh, as far as walks go, like look at this. He doesn't walk, guys. He's not a he's not a like a eight percent guy. He's like a seven five. So many one twenty one. Oh yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. But yeah, Watts Green Noah to me is is one of the more undervalued guys out there. Like look at this four year rate one twenty. Twenty six percent, right? That's not too. 40 or whatever in NFBC. I think that's so crazy to me. Um, the last one here is Tucker Davidson. I could not care less, I'm gonna, but I am going to change that to this. I don't think Tucker is that great. I don't think he's... No, no, no. Does it make 13 starts for them? I mean, Tucker Davidson isn't so bad. I remember writing, writing him like a Harley... Uh, Hardly Davidson or something like that. What was that one called? It was like this. Oh, I thought I had a link to it inside of here. What was it called? I just want to know what stupid pun I made. Gnarly. Oh, so close. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the slider was really good that time, but like. And he showed up in the playoffs and was all right too, but this is not a, like, this is not a 23% strikeout guy. Like, this isn't this, this isn't right. That's a good slider, but his fastball is bad. And that's really all he has, if I remember correctly. What is, what is this look like? Yeah, this isn't anything to write home about. Made him jingle though, because he didn't expect it. That's the only reason. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna leave that. Okay. Oh baby, we made it. We made it to the Orioles. Probably the last team I do today. All right, so if I do, so that means it's 10 streams. If I can do three for every two hours, right? Every two hour stream, we're gonna get through two teams, three teams. That's 10 streams, okay? So I'm going to knock these out by, what is it? Today's the 31st. Uh, probably not doing one tomorrow. Actually, I might honestly just do one tomorrow. <laughs> I want to knock these out, guys. Uh, definitely we'll do one Sunday. 
uh, probably Sunday night. Um, yeah, I'll be back Monday morning, probably. I I do have some. I have two podcasts I have to do. I might actually skip Monday because of that. Definitely be back on Tuesday. Um, definitely back on Wednesday. Definitely back Thursday. So I'm trying to do at least one, if not two, over the weekend. I'll do one, two, three, four, five. And then, all right, so we're going to have this done by the 14th. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, cool. Absolutely done by the 14th. What am I saying? That's like, yeah. We'll have it done by the 10th. Um, Target Davidson finals. So we're going to go to John Means now. Let's get to John Means. I really want to talk about John Means. I, and let's, all, let's make sure that there's no one on the crew here that is being left out uh, for the uh, Orioles. What's up, Burger? Yeah, man. I got a... I'm going to be streaming a lot. <laughs> I thought I was going to shift to YouTube. There's a lot of reasons why YouTube is better. Uh, just because it's just easier. Because we're going to be doing video content on there, too, and stuff. Like, you know, the the normal morning breakdowns and stuff, but we kind of want to, I'm, I'm trying to rethink like how I do those and see how much time I can devote to. If I can have like, I'm like really tempted to have like a regular video series uh, on YouTube. That's just, you know, I, I do it live streamed, but then it's cut up and then made into like a, essentially a pics of the day every five days a week. It becomes like a YouTube thing that people watch, you know? I think that's a cool thing. Um, Aw, thanks, Crooked. You guys are awesome. Uh, I'm really excited for, uh, you know, 2022 uh, in so many ways. Well, YouTube feed the Twitch. Well, right. So, uh, yeah, so, so, so yeah, so I, I thought, oh, I could just put on YouTube and everything and go back. But YouTube is being so silly about the video breakdown stuff. And they're, like, interrupting the stream if you guys tuned in for that. So, back to Twitch. Um, hopefully, they, uh, they get me back on the sports accelerator program that they had <laughs> that was cool um yeah twitch had a, like a they were helping promote sports stuff so they paid me to do sports things it was great then they stopped <laughs> but whatever the words you were saying and not the images wow andrew wow um i was about to say who is this starter and i was like oh no we're wrong one thing oh god i'm not gonna uh, i'm just gonna trust whatever projection they have for these guys i'm not even kidding like i'm gonna look at it and go yep yeah, sure whatever you guys say uh so we're gonna look just look at john means right now uh so so undervalued okay the story of john means i believe I'm trying to remember this right. We haven't found the middle, like the actual peak of John Means yet. Uh, fastball velocity has been this thing that he can touch, but then he pulled back on. Like he really showcased at the end of 2020, I had moments last year of being like a 94, 95, but really settled to be 92.8. And really that's what he was. Curveball thing came alive while the changeup wasn't as good at first, but then he got better at it. So, curveball, this is huge. But the problem is this. Still not getting enough strikes with it, so it's too inconsistent. But, I mean, look at this. It's got amazing shape to it. Seriously. That's a really good breaker from the left side. Like, he just needs to throw this in the, you know... I mean, I guess it's this that's messing up with the strike rate. The guys are, I assume, are just not swinging at it. Yeah, it's just a 36%. So that's the issue. They see the curveball and they just let it go. So either he has to throw it more and more in the zone. Uh, or maybe make it not start on the plate. Maybe try to do this. You know, maybe when he's missing, he's missing like over here. And he's going too far out and never gets back to the plate. But he has to start it here and actually get it here more, you know? Oh, man. I realize you guys can't see this stuff. This is all my fault. What I'm saying is, uh, 
instead of out here like i'm seeing the low strike rate on this swing swing rate right uh and the reason for that likely is that when he misses when he misses on them it's probably it's usually out here is my guess so he's missing away so that like a against a right hander then they just never swing at it or if it's against a lefty it's just too wasted over here right so what he needs to get better at is making it start in the zone and then come out because the O swing on this really really low 24 um, percent this is really good and this is really good it essentially says that guys are giving up on it which is great but it's, it's just a 60 percent strike rate and considering how poorly guys hit it we got to raise this up to 65. this oh my god what 73 percent that's crazy good 227 average sure whatever that's fine it's not you know it's not stellar it's not a 1.8 but it's a 53 percent plus percentage we go back to this look wow plus percentage on change-ups like john means here at number seven and you can understand like Here's Bieber, Sale, Geely. Wow, Bieber's as high. Sale, Geely. Wow, sales was really high. That was actually a problem last year, I think. Yeah, low swing strike rate on it. Low CSW, but got outs with it, I guess. Uh, or foul balls. Um, but yeah, Corey Kluber's changeup was a big deal. Woodruff's was good. Ashby's, what do you know, is still there. But that's a really high plus percentage. I. Uh, Four seamer, not so much. This is so fascinating. He's like so close to me. He's, he's like right there. A few blow ups, pretty consistent through. I mean, I, he was killing it up here and then he got hurt here. Um, and so what happened? Okay, so 93, 93. Did velocity go down when he returned? Yeah, because he's it's a lot of 93s here. But yeah, it's actually pretty much the same, I'd imagine. Yeah. Um, change-ups. Did usage change? It kind of looks like it did. Like he went to more curveballs in the second half. Like by the end, what is he doing here? 14, 22. Yeah, look at those usage going up on curveballs which i think is a good idea it's just uh it's got to come with a higher strike rate and it's not really is it coming at the expense of change-ups or is it coming at expense of four seamers and it looks like it's coming at expense of both kind of anyway what i'm getting at is john means is not a four year a guy he's a three seven 112 whip seems fine yeah he's not a 103 my god yeah, 112 is fine. That's a good projection for him. This is fine. Uh, and then um, I think this goes slightly up. Wow. I didn't realize that. That's why the whip is so low. God, he's such a good... Oh, man. I'm going to say it's a 23.5. I uh, yeah. So like 370 array, 112 whip, 24% strikeout rate across 170 innings. Why is John Means going at like 200? <laughs> I mean, all right, hold on. Let's let's do something because of this probably, right? So, here's the injury. 488 year right and since returning second half is worse uh because he always ends up burning us um he had such a good first half this was your dlh against the ray rays you don't start that he goes against the nationals we do he hurts us good good burned us against detroit burned us against the rays settling down burned us against toronto I'll raise this to 85. Three 
to. Um, I'm still a fan of this. Yeah. Cool. All right. We're moving on. Um, do not care. As long as none of these are like super good. No, no, we're going to change this one. Just get out of here. Chris Ellis, you're not good. Sorry. Just do that. I, I don't care. Don't care. Don't, no, 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 no. Whatever their projection system says, I'm going to trust those guys for that. Um, but all right. Yeah, it's, it's 1150 now. I, uh, is there anyone else on Baltimore that I really should be adding? It's, those are the guys that are going, oh, Jordan Lyles is here now. Uh, he is in the FA, so let's at least tackle this. Um, it's not going to be a whole thing. You know, as long as the other guys are actually interesting. Um, here's Jordan. So, Inside Edge called it a cutter. I think it's a slider. I think we're going to be calling it a slider next year. Yeah, it's too much of a gap for it to be a cutter. That's silly. It's a slider. I, uh, but I, uh, this new pitch at times was ridiculously good for him. At times. Um, this came around, yeah, 25% usage is crazy. Swing strike rate, I think. When he had a, when he had games when it was both of these working, excuse me, the curveball and the uh, the slider, it was re he was great, but it, it's just not that great of a product overall. When you have a fastball that constantly gets hit, uh, and these guys are not above a fifteen percent swing strike rate, it's just not great. This is also a huge problem. Uh, higher average allowed on the on the curveball. Um, yeah. Okay. So I do want to see. So yeah, this is the story, isn't it? Six, 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 gorgeous. Because <laughs> Boston. Eight. <laughs> he had this stretch that kind of saved his season a little a little bit those three games I mean it's kind of wonder but it's against the White Sox like maybe you streamed him against Baltimore and maybe Cleveland but I mean no so let's go back to that I uh, I want you guys to see like in this one against Boston what happened the slider was great It was a birthday party. Yeah, it felt like that, certainly. This is against Rocky Road. Why did it say not Rocky Road? Oh, it did. Okay. Um, yeah, the cutter was good again. Then the changeup? Nah, that's not dependable at all. Did he start that game? I don't know if he, I guess he, I don't know why there's no, or maybe I just didn't update the roundup that day. Ha, huh. so I upgrade from a, a birthday party to a werewolf. I think that's more appropriate, yeah. So what did change up? Change up came out sometimes. <laughs> All right, so so I gotta make a decision here. Um, what are they saying, a 517? This is, yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to touch it. I think that's right. That's right. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, so this is, I'm going to save as. Alright. 
that's all I got today, guys. Uh, any questions y'all have, please ask now. Um, but uh, this is this is what I'm gonna be doing. This is uh. <laughs> oh, thanks so much, Fur Tree. Yeah, that's right, guys. Man, 2021. What a wild year, huh? I'm gonna put out a um a tweet after this. Um, just kind of like I'm gonna make that Twitter thread, you know, of 2021 in review for us. I'd say one of the cooler things this year was yeah, doing these live streams and starting the uh you know the the breakdown videos and stuff. Um, yeah, this one flew by. It really did. Um, I mean, yeah, we did so much. We added. We had a podcast network and everything. We we had two million listens across all of our podcasts. So what did I do? I operated at a loss this year. <laughs> As I invested everything and more. You know? I mean, after 2020, we hoarded, right? Like, as everyone did, we... I was going to make investments going into the 2020 season. COVID happened. I held on to it. And didn't really do much investing or anything like that for like three months. And then once the season started, I kind of sat down and thought, wait a second, like, why am I holding on to what we have? I should be pushing it all back in um, as much as I can, because I believe so much in our, you know, what we're doing. And the more cool things we can do, then we're just going to do better. And I, uh, so I did that in 2020. Um, you know, it went from one awesome developer seriously i mean dan west i gotta say man like what an amazing guy um and i you know he 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 stepped aside and it kind of made me think you know he was doing his own personal thing which super happy for him um made me sit down and be like all right you know i could try and find that one person again or you know what i can try to like really push more um and we did and uh, then we pushed more again. I, uh, yeah, we have six. We have now have six WordPress developers and five database engineers, which is insane, and a UI UX lead. Um, that's crazy to me. I, uh, absolutely crazy. So, so yeah, we built. So what we did is that. So I said, you know what? I want to create this. I want to create this page. Uh, and Jeff Nivey and Brett Goldhammer like. You guys were amazing. You made this happen. You know, David Fenko and Brandon Lundberg and Will Gladstone. Like, they worked their butts off last year, too. This time last year to make this happen. I, uh, Which is really cool. Like, look at this stuff. Like, this didn't exist a year ago. And I was trying to tell you guys, like, how I do my research is going to completely change in a year. And that's exactly what's going on, you know? Like, this entire page did not exist last year. I, uh, Which is so insane to me. Um, and then I, I, and then I thought, all right, so we, you know, we, we, uh, we, we made the deals, all that kind of stuff to make that happen. But then I kind of sat down and said, all right, what's, what's the next evolution of this? And that's what PL7 is. So in order to really execute that, I kind of, I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. Of like, you know what, for that dream, gotta, you know, pony up. So we'll see. We'll see uh, if it works. <laughs> I have also made the decision to essentially stop production at least a week before PL7. Um, and if we can't do that, then we'll delay it by a week. But I, we've already installed systems to make it so that launch day actually is launch day. And not how the last two launches have gone of all of our caching being messed up. And then the server is getting overloaded and all of this stuff all gone now i've invested into that never again at launch day those launch days my god i hate that that's like a reputation yeah at launch day exactly man i remember doing this stream trying to show you this trying to go to jacob de Gram's page and showing you like what we created you know trying to be like guys look at this We've redone how this looks like you have every single pitch and all of the things and I wanted to show it off and, and have this big moment and I couldn't <laughs> because it was so slow. 
Oh, man. God, this guy is so good. You guys know him? His name is Jacob DeGrom. Oh. I mean, even this is like... To me, this these tables, to me, are so boring. And I feel like, oh, man. All of the things I want to do to these, uh, I'm, I'm happy that we get to. Get to do. But, uh... Like, for example, just so you guys know, this stats overview... Like... Our stats overview is going to be up here, and the repertory is going to be underneath. Because there's one thing I do certainly when I go to Fangraphs is I look at this. I need to I need to have this reference point, right? And I we don't have that here. I got to go down to this, and this isn't even as doesn't it's not quite right. So uh, I wanted to change that. That's just another hint. You guys are not ready for what PL7 is. Okay, I'm going to go now. Thank you all so much, seriously, for being a part of this. Uh, it's super cool to just all of a sudden just show up the night before. So, yeah, I'm going to stream and to have as many as you show up and do it. I will be back probably tomorrow. Um, I have to do this. I have little time <laughs> to do all of it. So, I'll, I'll see you guys then. Uh, have a wonderful New Year celebration. Uh, I cannot wait for 2022. 2022. I hope to see all of you there. Uh, and, you know, being a part of, yeah, the community, PL Plus, or even on Twitch or on Twitter or whatever it is. We have a lot in store. We have so much to show you. So, uh, yeah, Happy New Year, everybody, and yeah, go blue. So, as always, all hail CSW, and may your babas be low and your strikeouts high.